Divine truths frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and the public. How can a child learn to have a relationship or connection with God when their parents are blocked to God? And how can we best assist our children from this place? Well, it's a very good question. The answer is they can't. <laughs> if a parent is blocked towards God, the child will find it very, very difficult to develop a relationship with God until such a time, uh, except under one or two circumstances. So let's, uh, let's assume for a moment that the parent is blocked to God. So yep. the parent does not have a relationship with God and also has some feelings about God that they don't want a relationship with God. And the child comes into the parent's world, mm -hmm. right? Now, as long as that parent is not imposing its emotional condition upon the child and not forcing the child through some emotional method of coming to the same conclusions as the parent, yep. then the child will be relatively free to start engaging a relationship with God on its own right. Does that make sense? Yep. But if yep. the parent in any way imposes emotionally on the child or in any way imposes its belief systems on the child, it will severely restrict the child from developing a relationship with God and therefore probably in the end result in the child not having a relationship with God. So it just really depends not upon the injury mm. being released from the parent so much as the injury of imposing the parent's will upon the child being released from the parent. Yeah. When the parent imposes its own will and emotions upon the child through its, act, through its activities and through its actions and through its feelings, then the child will probably conform to the parent's belief system. Now, if the parent is braver than that and also more humble than that and recognises that it has belief systems that may be not out of harmony with love, and refuses to impose those belief systems upon the child, then the child has a much greater capacity to develop a relationship with God even if the parent does not have one. However, what we notice in society generally is if the parent does not have a relationship with the child, it often has very strong emotional reasons for not having such relationship. And of course it then attempts to impose those same emotional reasons and belief systems upon the child. And that is not giving the child the freedom to make its own choice on the matter, but rather already the child has an emotional feeling inside of the child that if it has a relationship with God, it will incur the displeasure or yep. disapproval of its parent. And that's not allowing the child to be free to develop its own relationship with God if it's so desired. It's very hard for a parent with emotional injuries with God to allow a child to not... To, to develop a relationship with God without having some emotional injuries with God. Yeah. Mm. And this is yeah. why it is imperative that parents address their emotional injuries with God, whatever they are, and their desire to rebel against God, whatever their reasons are. It's imperative that the parents yeah. address these particular issues. Yeah. And this is something that we must understand as parents. We might believe that we are capable of dealing with something with equality and dealing with something with no um, projection of control and dealing with something with a complete openness while we maintain a certain perspective that is actually physically impossible. Yep. Inside of ourselves, it's physically impossible to not have some kind of effect on our child based on what we believed. Yep. And so this is very important that our, we must understand as parents that our belief systems and our emotions are very important. We must understand that if we do not desire to bring them into harmony with absolute truth, there will be a negative effect on our child and it is unavoidable. And we've got to see this relationship that if we choose to, to, to stay in our current condition where we're out of harmony with love and out of harmony with truth and out of harmony with humility, if we choose that condition actively or we refuse to develop from that condition, we are automatically harming our child whether we believe we are or not. And so it's very important as a parent that we understand that underlying principle. Yep. Yep. It is unavoidable. We cannot hope to make our child believe things or, or feel things or even allow our child to believe or feel things that we ourselves are not allowing within ourselves. Yep. 
It's, a, it's an unavoidable process. We will impose upon this child who's developing our rules, not God's. We yeah. will impose upon the child who's developing our truth, not God's. We'll impose upon the child developing our version of love and not God's. And it's imperative that we give that up. And if we're truly humble as a parent, we would desire to give that up, even if it's not for our own sake, at least for the for sake theirs. of the child. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's pretty, would it, would it be fair to say that it's parenting, if I want to use that word, is pretty simple. Yep. If you want to do it. God's way. God's way. Yeah. Parenting is very simple when you want to do it God's way. It also is very enjoyable when you do it God's way because you, you, you don't break any laws and as, as a result, all of the subsequent results of parenting are all happy. Then none yep. of them are sad, right? Parenting as the way people do it on earth at the moment is very painful very painful process for the majority of parents, very painful process for the majority of children as well, because we've chosen to do it out of harmony with God's way. And as a result of that, there's lots of pain and suffering that gets created. And, and we need to understand that every time we choose to do it our way rather than God's way, we are going to create pain and suffering if our way isn't in harmony with love. Yep. And a lot of times we believe it's in harmony with love. We, we think it's in harmony with love, but it's completely demonstrable that it's out of harmony with love. And, and we, we often are in the state as parents where we lack humility. And as a result of that, we have painful consequences in our life, in our relationship with our children. And yep. our children have pains, painful consequences, often that they deal with for the rest of their life on earth as a result of our actions as parents. So you can see... Like my, my, my feelings are, if you're choosing to be a parent, become a very humble person, completely open to all the truths of the universe, whether you personally believe them or not. Yep. <laughs> and you, you're going to need to take these actions, otherwise you're going to create pain and suffering in your own life and in the lives of your own children. Yep. Yep. And then their subsequent children... Down and of the course, track. their subsequent children, if they make the same choice, you know, to, to yep. walk away from God's principles and laws and, and in particular walk away from the principles of love, then their children are going to have the same damage and their children will have the same damage and so forth and so forth. And this is how you get the sins of the parents perpetrated against the child and then the, per the next generation and the next generation after that. And this is what uh, I meant in the Bible when, when I said that the sins of the parents get given to the child for generation after generation after generation. Yep. And it's a sad consequence of parents that lack humility. Yep. Um, because if we, if we had a humility, we would never choose to do that. Yeah. So would it be fair to say, as a parent, you know, let's say you, you deal with your own injuries around a, a topic or, yep. a, or a certain situation, yep. and that you then understand what God's view is. Yes. And so you then, you're then doing it lovingly. To your children. Not only is it a, it's not an intellectual thought though, because once you've released the error inside of your soul and it's no longer existing, the way the soul operates is that you now can absorb God's truth about that error into your soul and now your soul automatically does exactly the thing in harmony yep. with love. And since it's automatic, the child feels it in that moment. In that moment, it's like as soon as you make a change, the child instantly yep. changes. Yep. Yep. And we need to understand it's not this intellectual thing but a complete soul-based thing. Yep. So is it at that point that the, like the multi-generational injury stops? Exactly. If it was an injury that my parents passed down to me and I've now released this particular injury emotionally and my soul's now absorbed a new truth from God as a result of my desire for it to do that, from that moment on, my all subsequent generations of children that, that might come from me are all free of that injury. Yeah. That's the gift you give to every other generation that follows after you. If you hold on to the injury or create even more injuries, then the penalty you can see is that every subsequent mm -hmm. generation also will probably contain the same injury until somebody of your children, one brave individual of your children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren, oh, yep. decides to stop that cycle through dealing with that particular injury and releasing it from themselves. That's the gift, one of the other gifts we give to our children. Every emotional injury that we're humble to and release is another emotional injury they do not have to bear yeah. Yeah. for their life or that they don't have to choose themselves at some point in their future to release. 
And so it's very, very important that we go through that process ourselves. If we're, if we're true, sincere, unhypocritical parents, we will willingly engage that process. If we're hypocritical, we won't willingly engage it. We'll, we'll want the child to correct themselves, but we won't want to correct ourselves. Yep. Yeah. So let's say as a parent, I'm creating an injury, automatic injury within yep. my child. I'd say, for example, that <coughs> And it might perpetuates. be something you're even unconscious about. Yep. yep, and that perpetuates through generations. Say, so do yep. I then have a law of um, compensation to deal with for the multi generational? Of course. Yep. Of course, because because any injury that's in yourself, and this is a part of the consequences of the law, any injury that's in yourself that is perpetrated, um, and by the way, it's the same consequences if you had no children. Sorry, can you explain that? Yeah, see, so, so you were thinking that what I was saying was that if you had a child and you had a certain injury, right, that the consequence on your soul would be worse than if you didn't have the child and retain the injury. Right? And I'm saying to you, mm. no, that's not how God's laws work. The fact that you are retaining the injury and are resistant to the injury has its own consequence. And part of the consequence is if you had have had children you would have passed this injury down to them. And that consequence is attributed to you even though you've had no children. Uh, okay. <laughs> so you can't make a choice to say, I'm not going to have a child and therefore be in a better soul condition. Your soul oh, condition okay. Right. Okay. will be determined right. by the feeling that's in you. It won't yep. be determined by the fact you had children while the feeling was in you. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Your soul condition is determined by its condition right now, whether you have children or not. Yep. And But... Part of the determination of the consequence is if you had have had children, you would have passed this down to them and your unwillingness to be humble is a part of the consequence of dealing with the particular yeah. injury. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying there? Yeah, that's See, pretty... God's laws are so fine, my friend. They are like, <laughs> they're like every little tiny nut and bolt is yeah. accounted for. Yeah, I hadn't thought of it that way. And you can't bit... avoid the consequences of a law just by not having child, children, Yeah. right? The reality is the consequences of the law are imposed upon you. And one of the consequences of breaking every law is that if you had have had children, you would have passed this injury down to them and you would have willingly done so. Right? Yeah. And there is a consequence to that outcome, even though you haven't had the children yet. Yeah. Yeah. OK. That... Yeah. OK. I'll... So so there's no excuse for not dealing with an injury. You can't say to yourself, yeah. oh, I'm not going to have a child and therefore not have to deal with this injury. You can't say that because the reality is the consequences are already imposed upon your soul yep. with the choice you made. Yep. And it didn't matter whether you had children or not. It's the same consequence that's placed upon your soul. And the consequence is that if you would have had children, you would have passed it down. And that's an unloving action. Yep. You would have chosen to take that unloving action. So that consequence is already imposed upon your soul whether you had the child or not. Yeah. <laughs> So hypotheticals don't exist. Hypotheticals don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the reality is that everything that God uh, actually, all of God's laws uh, have all the consequences involved in, the, in, the, uh, pen, in, the, in regards to the negative consequences of breaking them, have them all opposed upon the soul, whether we were going to have children or not. But one of the consequences is you have the ability to have children and so therefore would have passed this down and that consequence is yeah. attributed to your soul. The, it's a demonstration of the lack of love that's in us if we're willing to pass down a multi-generational injury to our future generations. Yep. And that is a condition of our soul that does need to be corrected. In other words, we need to get to the point where we see that it's not loving to hold on to an emotional injury just from the perspective of the potential of us having a child and passing that emotional injury to them. We need yep. to see that that would be an unloving choice to hold on to the to, injury. Yep. So, so instead of saying, oh, I'm not going to have a child because I've got all these injuries, hoping that that will somehow mitigate God's laws, you can't it do that. It yep. Yeah, you can't do that. It won't mitigate God's laws. God's laws are imposed upon you as if you had had the children. Yep. <laughs> because you would have chosen to hold on to the injury if you had these children. So my suggestion is, if you know an injury inside of yourself, don't wait to have children or don't put off having children. Deal with the injury. Yeah. <laughs> like, stop trying to make 
uh, changes, like uh, this is what I see most people doing. I see most people going, I know that I have this particular injury, so I'm not going to have a child yet. And I'm going, well, if you know you've got that particular injury, why aren't you dealing with it? <laughs> why aren't you releasing it? And if you are releasing it, it's not going to affect you having a child. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's not a good excuse to not have a child or a good excuse to have one. Like you, you're using the not having a child or that particular reasoning to, to explain away a lack of desire for a child, which is driven by some other emotion, yep. in other words. And my suggestion to people is stop doing all of that. Stop, start being real with yourself. You've got an injury. You know it's there. Deal with it now. The fact that you're willing to put it off, there's an automatic consequence that you're willing to put it off. And one of the consequences is if you put it off and you had a child, that child would yeah, now have yeah. the injury. And that consequence is it was already in your soul even though you haven't had the child. Yeah. Right? So, so deal with the issue now. Deal with it now. Don't put it off. Don't wait. Don't say to yourself, oh, I'm not going to have a child till later and, and, and it will all be better then. Yep. Deal with every injury you have as you find it. You know, that's the yep. only unimpocritical and sincere thing to do. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In a way, it, uh, pe people don't understand how refined God's laws are, right? They don't understand that you can't prevent the soul damage by putting off something. In fact, you create soul damage by putting off something. And you can't prevent soul damage by, by putting off a pregnancy. The soul damage is already in you. Yeah. Like putting it off is not the only way. The only way you can prevent something is by dealing with the soul damage. Now, if you don't have a sincere desire to deal with it right now, then there's a consequence to that. Yeah. Why wouldn't you have a sincere desire to deal with something that's erroneously out of harmony with love right now? Why wouldn't you do that? There's got to be mm. something wrong. Why wouldn't you choose love over? being unloving right now. Yep. There's got to be some kind of rebellion in you that causes that, right? So this is where I feel a lot of people make, make mistakes. As soon as they notice a particular injury inside of themselves, their focus should be to deal with it, to address it, instead of putting it off for any reason. Yep. And don't put off desires in your life, such as the desire to have a child, just because you have an injury. Don't put off the desire. Stop putting off the healing of the, injury, the problem, yeah. the, the healing of the injury. Yeah. All right? See, a lot of, I, I don't understand why we constantly reorganise things in our mind uh, this way. See, if, if we were truly sincere, we would notice the injury and we'd want to deal with it straight away if we were truly sincere. And we wouldn't put off having a child as a result we would deal with the injury. Yeah. Yep. We would focus our time and energy on dealing with the injury. Yeah. And this is, I feel, something that a lot of people, when they ask these questions about, oh, should I put off having a child until I've dealt with certain injuries? When they ask me those kind of questions, they're not understanding the penalty is already on their soul as if they'd had a child anyway. So, so why would they put off having the child? If it's a true desire, have the child. The only reason to put off having a child is that it's not a pure desire. And as I said earlier, mm. if you're going to not have a pure desire to have a child, then I, I question sincerely why you would be having sex as well. Yeah. <laughs> because sooner or later you're going to have a child if you, uh, if you have sex. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. Question eight. Pretty, bit of a hard one, that one. I bet there'll be a few people <laughs> going, what's going on with that one? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. mean to say that even though I don't have a child. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 God's a clever God. Oftentimes we think God's stupid. You know, like, like we, think, we think, yeah, God's pretty stupid, you know. None of the laws will apply to me as long as I put something off. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no. I've, no, I've thought that. Yeah, most, a lot of people yeah. think that. And it's not the case yes. at all. It's the soul condition inside of the individual that all of God's corrective laws work upon, and that yeah, soul condition would create the error in the in the child. So, so you know, changing an action such as not having a child doesn't change your soul condition. Change, yeah. Your soul condition yeah. is going to remain the same until you deal with the error. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's good. Cool.